Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, we are going to build an agentic rag using Langgraph. So if you look at here on my screen, we have Langgraph based conversational rag system. It's a bit different than how you know we have been building earlier. Like it's multi-turn conversations with context preservation. So we, are, we have suddenly heard talking about context engineering. Earlier we used to talk about prompt engineering, but now we have moved to context engineering right and for all the right regions because context is the key now right in the agentic ai system and there are different things coming up you know context uh, limit to context token would have understood earlier also now we are talking about you know context offloading context pollutions context decay so on and so forth so it's basically context where you have good enough information available for the agent to make better decisions right that context will have memory input output prompts and every other thing like the tooling etc now if you look at here here right it says multi-turn conversation with context preservation the repo is already on my github i'll show you all the code i'll give you all the code we'll run it it says intelligent filtering of irrelevant questions automatic evaluations and improvement of search results, adaptive query optimization with retrial logic, complete dialogue memory management. So these are the five features that we have, we have here in this conversational RAG system. Now, this is very detailed, right? I have created this repository for anybody who don't, who know, who don't have a good inf you know, understanding of this. They can also go through it. It first talks about what RAG is, so you can see it says retrieval augmented generations generation combines information retrieval with language generation it has three different steps retrieve augment generate so these are the three things why use rag fundamental question in interview also problem is ai hallucinations so rag solution is basically it grounds it it grounded you know it's grounded generation so it basically grounds answers in your data or the document that you have let's say uh, outdated information is a problem. So it basically you can access, you know, to current knowledge bases, current source of data, no source verification. With RAG, you can have source citations. You can cite a specific document, right? Generic responses here, you can have domain specific accuracy. So these are the thing, right? Uh, these are fine. Here we have a system architecture. I'll show you that in a little bit. Now, when you talk about Langgraph, so Langgraph is, of course, from Langchain, you know, that helps you build, you know, a stateful AI agent where you can manage state. The memory management is also very good. Uh, and it's based on your graph principles where you have node, you have edges, you know, you have uh, very similar how we have worked with graph data structure. So if you look at in this node, and I'll show you what we are doing. We have this conversational rag system where user will ask a question, it will refresh query. So it convert follow-ups to a standalone question. That's the first step. Refresh query is the first step. Then it classifies the topic, guys, right? It says each question answerable, like is your out of range question, is the answer is available, you know, is a normal conversation with follow-ups. So it basically classifies the topic. If the question is on topic, then it fetch the documents. Retrieve, you know, fetch the document first goes to vector store, you know, evaluate the document through grade relevance because it has grading also, uh, you know, it has relevant docs or max attempt Then it basically uh, create the response, generate answer with rag. If no docs, fallback response, no info found, or it can tweak the questions, refine the query also, right? The three, three steps that you see it over here. Uh, if no, then of course, reject the off topic out of scope questions and then end the uh, workflow, right? Uh, but here, there are the system components. It uses conversational history memory through memory saver. So memory saver is there in Langra, right? Then we have GP, we're using GPT-4.0 mini as an LLM. You can also use Gemini if you don't have credit for OpenAI. For vector store, we are using Chroma DB. And for, uh, you know, embeddings, we're using text embedding three small from OpenAI. This is how an architecture looks like. Pretty simple, right? I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the code and then we will run it. Right, as I said, the already five things. You can see I'm running it through UV and not PIP. I'm using UV as a dependency manager. PyProject.2ml is here. If you, when you get the GitHub repo and if you want to run this code, 
open a terminal and just do UV sync. You just have to do UV sync, you have to do nothing. Okay. When you do UV sync, that's all. That's what you have to do. Okay. Now, coming back to this, what we are importing? We are importing Pyrentic for data validations. We are having .env, load .env because we have our OpenAI key in .env. That's what we have. Now, in the Langchain imports, we are importing few things. We are importing all the utils from Langchain, like base message, human message, AI message, system messages, right? That will help us write some prompt and messages. From document, we are importing. Okay, then we are importing chat prompt template for you know prompting and all. For Chroma D, we are using as a vector store. Okay, uh, OpenAI embedding chat OpenAI we are using from Langchain OpenAI. Chat OpenAI we are using for model GPT 40 mini. OpenAI embeddings we are using for text embedding three small for embeddings. Lang graph imports we are getting the state graph and end and memory saver as I said right memory saver we are using for the memory thing. Visualization imports, we are having some visualization thing. If you are running this on Colab, then it works. Otherwise, it will not work. Now, we are loading the environment variable here, you see, uh, the OpenAI API key or Gemini key. First, we have data models. We are creating different data models. So first is dialog state, which take the type dictionary, you can see, a simple typed namespace. At runtime, it is equivalent to a plain dictionary, right? It basically, a type of dictionary, you know, that has a type checker. You know, we'll expect all in you can see it read over here right in this it's a state container for tracking conversations through the rag pipeline we're using this for tracking the con conversation right you can see it it list of conversation messages retrieve document topic flag everything is stored then we have a topic grade base model is being imported you can see it says model for topic classification result so this is what we are creating is the question about the target topic if yes yes if not no then we have relevance grade model for document relevance grading result is the document relevant to the user's question if yes not no so this is our data uh, model that we have for parentic we use you know for validations to make sure we are enforcing little bit to get the similar uh, in the similar line and doesn't like divert uh, like divert right then we have document management manages document creation storage and retrieval right now i'm having a simple function it's called create simple document or sample document in reality you will have your own pdf and whatnot then you can use libraries like docling or any ocr or you know pi pdf2 or markdown mark it down or anything field or whatever pi mu pdf whatever i have so simple here uh document that you see these are all page content because in Langchain, you know how we write. We write page content, page underscore content. I can give some metadata. Like all of it, I want as a different TXT. Honor.txt, dish.txt, restaurant info, restaurant info TXT. Basically, it's about a restaurant and then return the docs. Basically, it's create list of items, page content. Now we are having a we are setting up the retriever very modular code and that's why i all mostly i write modular code and of course a little bit of it's written from vibe coding also right the comments and all and uh, some fallbacks and everything right i just gave it uh, you know some uh, bare bone code and it's basically written a very good code actually now here we have set up retriever here we're talking about the retriever we are setting up the vector store and retriever embedding function we are using this model as i said and then we are having chroma db as i said right chroma db we are using for vector store that you see then we are configuring the retriever to return top k most document that you see and search k equal to five you can keep whatever now the rack system it's the main rack system that orchestrates the all components and how do we orchestrate through line graph it initializes the rack system with all components you can see setup environment the documents have been initialized retrievers have been initialized models have been initialized rack chain have been initialized and we are building and compiling the graph that you see. We have a very simple prompt template. You should improve this prompt template in production. This is very simple. We are passing history, context, and question. This history should also come from a different uh, service provider or a tool like Redis or Superbase or you know something like that. Okay. That you see here we return the chain. Now this is the line graph thingy where we write the node functions as I said right in Langraph everything is node and edges you can see it says 
rephrase follow up questions into standalone queries using conversation history. This node handles the initial processing of user questions, converting context dependent follow ups and self contained queries. You can see it over here. In this slice turns list if needed, add current questions to conversation history if not already there. So if it's not there, it will add it to the history. If we have chat history, then it use it to rephrase the question as simple as that and create the prompt for question rephrasing. You can see we have classified topic, the same thing for classifications that you see here. We are using a structured output for cons consistent classification that you can see structured output uh, is there. We're creating a new chain that you see prompt and a structured LLM. We are using grader.invoke, uh, so on and so forth, returning the state. Topic router is there that routes the topic based on classification and fetches the doc. It evaluates the docs. Here is the uh, decision router. Here is the tweaking the question. Check if you have reached the maximum attend because the retry is only two times. If two times not coming, then it will just say not in info not found or something. Create the final response using the rag chain. You can see this node creates the answer based on relevant documents. And all of it, fallback is there, some reject of topic is there, and then we construct the graph. You can see it says build and compile the state graph. In a slice memory check pointer, scratch padding, right? Check pointer memory saver. You can see here we create the state graph and we add all the nodes refresh, classify, reject, fetch, evaluate, create, tweak, and fallback. All the nodes are created in the graph, right? This is how it works. Define the ages between nodes. As I said, add conditional routing based on topics, workflow, add age again, conditional routing again, additional ages, set entry, compile the graph. You can print the graph also. You can also visualize the graph, right? It all depends where are you doing? Are you doing Mermaid? Are you doing Google Colab? You can also do it notebook also. And this is the main inference. Just, uh, you know, passing some questions. We have some questions. We have some already dummy questions. Like how is the weather? So let's say if I ask how is the weather, this would ideally reject it because our document is about a restaurant, not about a weather. So weather should ideally not work. That's why we are building rack to ground it on our document or our data. So that is the first thing. Then second is you can see scenario two questions for which no answer can be found. How old is the owner of the restaurant? We don't have that information. So to basically just say, you know, uh, try to refine the query twice and then say, a just give a graceful answer saying, I don't know, there's no information available. And then the normal conversation that you see it over here. And then a follow-up question. So let's ask it out and see what happens. So when you run this, and when you're running, you can see UV, UV run langgraph rack system.py. So I'm showing you in big screen here now. Okay, I mean, I just expanded it. You can see it says environment variables loaded. It will first create the retrieval, I first create the vectors, store it in Chroma, then retrieve it, then compile the graph and then run it, you know, the question that we have and then it should do it. You can see it over here. Let me explain that step by step. Very modular rag. It's like a boilerplate. I wanted to create a boilerplate for you guys. You can take this code and just change that uh, document loading part except mostly it should work okay now guys if you look at this we have environmental environment variables loaded successfully vector vector store and retriever in a slice with four documents because we have four page content graph successfully compiled with memory support and rack system in a slice successfully first question out of range question entering refresh query with the state what is how is the weather Topic flag, no. Entering topic router, routing to reject of topic, entering reject of, you can see the response. I cannot respond to that. Fantastic answer. This is how you ground, reduce the hallucinations in your agentic rag systems. Number two, question with no available answer. How old is the owner of the restaurant Vela Vita? You can see it enters the classifying topic. Topic flag, yes, correct. Entering topic router. Routing to fetch docs, entering fetch docs, fetch retrieve two documents because Bella Vita, Bella Vita word is there, so it's basically looking at the semantic search. But the result is no, so ready for response false entering decision because two times it will check. So this is the two times it check here that you can see. Then it tweak questions 
what is the age of the owner of the Vela Vita? So it also tweaked it. Again, do it. But it says, I'm sorry. I could not find the information you were looking for. Fantastic answer. This is how you reduce hallucination in agentic rag. Because those informations are not there, boss. I cannot answer it. As simple as that. Then we have scenario three. Normal conversation with follow-up. When does uh, Vela, uh, Vela Vita or Vista open? You can see now it generates the answer. It says Bella Vista is open from Monday to Sunday. Weekday hours are 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and weekend hours are blah, blah, blah. Right. Again, the follow up question also on Sunday, you can see. Right. It says, when does Villa Vista open with the content? You can see refresh follow up question. Follow up question, if you see here, open from this, 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 retrieve document. Also on Sunday is the question. You see, also on Sunday. So what are the opening hours for Bella Vista? Automatically, it refreshed the query because you asked like a very short also on Sunday. Then it refreshed it to give agent a better context, you know, uh, using refresh query. And then it gives such a beautiful answer. It says uh, Bella Vista is open on Sundays from 11 to 11 p.m. So it gives Bella Vista open on Sunday from 11 to 11 p.m. Fantastic. Right. So this is this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is what I wanted to show you that we have built a simple lang graph agentic rag in you know, a very modular code based on classes, functions, pretty modular. The only thing you have to change coming over here is this page content document. You can just have some PyPDF and all to load it and use this code wherever you want to use it, right? Uh, I'll give the code on my GitHub repo over here. Uh, you know, this also explain everything. You can see everything it explains, the state definitions, the document management. Document management is something that you have to change. As I said, right, this will get changed. Uh, you will have your own documents. A state definition is fantastic, you see. LLM setup, setup implementation detail, refresh query, classifying topic, uh, evaluate documents, it grade each retrieve documents, building the graph, such a fantastic uh, the readme that I have created guys using of course chat GPT to be very honest because I cannot write so much but I have told that's where I my understanding also comes up because I understand this topic so I can get best outcomes from AI so tooling is important with your understanding this is what I wanted to show you if you want to learn more I'll give you the identic AI toolkit link in description check it out if you want already built products SaaS product I'm saying already built Identic AI based. Six of them are there in a single bundle. I'll give the link in description. It's a bit costly, but you can sell it for 10x multiple wherever you want to sell it. So find those links in description. If you like this video, hit the like icon and share this video with your, uh, with your friends and peer and also subscribe to the channel guys. That motivates me to create more such videos in the near future. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.